Hello and what's up guys? It's been a long time since I've created an accounting video so I hope you all enjoy this. Okay, so for today we're going to talk about one of the most beautiful concepts in accounting and that's process costing. So for today, I'm going to break down process costing and we're going to tackle and approach this lesson in an organized manner. So first, we're going to talk about what are the two accounting systems. Second, why there are accounting systems. Third, we're going to differentiate the two accounting systems. Fourth, I'm going to illustrate to you an example of process costing. And lastly, the reason why you're watching this video is because we're going to use the T-account method in process costing. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a lot. So there are two famous cost accounting systems. The first is, of course, the job order cost system. The second is the process costing system. So maybe you're asking why are there cost accounting systems? So it's in the name itself. Cost accounting has the ultimate purpose of computing for cost. That's why it's cost accounting. So the reason why there are actually costing systems is because we need a way to track these costs. So when I say costs, we typically talk about direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So that's basically it. That's the reason why there are costing systems. It's a way for us to track these costs. So now let's differentiate the two costing systems. So for job order costing systems, it's fairly easy. Why? Because when you talk about job order costing systems, the products sold here are customized. So if the products are customized, then they are for specific customers. Since they are for specific customers, there are separate job order cost sheets where we can track these costs. So that's basically it. So when we're talking about the job order costing system, you track these costs through the job order cost sheets. Fairly easy. Now let's talk about process costing systems. So for process costing systems, what we sell here are standardized products or homogeneous products. So when you talk about homogeneous products, it's basically the same for everyone. So an example would be a manufacturer of t-shirts. So since these t-shirts uh, just vary with sizes, uh, they're homogeneous products. So customers just go into the store and buy whatever t-shirt they want. So now, how do we track these costs? Since these are not customized products just like in job order costing systems, it addresses this issue by tracking the cost and products to a period of time, usually in months. This is why when you solve process costing problems, you usually see the work in process beginning, the units started this month, and the work in process in the ending month. Okay, so now that the concept is clear, so now that we understand what are the two costing systems, we understand why there are costing systems, of course, to track the flow of production costs, uh, we also know how to differentiate job order costing and process costing system. So now I think we can step right into problem solving. So here's an illustration of a problem in process costing. After we solve this using the traditional method, we're going to solve this using the t-account method. Now I'm pretty sure you're all curious, especially for those who have already mastered process costing. Okay, so let's begin. So remember that when we're talking about process costing, we're talking about how we can track the flow of production costs through periods. So of course, since it's already August this month, let's consider August as the current month and July as the prior month or last month. Okay, so first, there are two methods of accounting for beginning inventory. Okay, so we have here the FIFO or the first in first out and the weighted average. So for the FIFO, we just assume that the beginning inventory, there has already been partial work done last month. And it is going to be the first portion of inventory that's going to be finished. So of course, the beginning inventory last month is going to be finished this month. And it's going to be the priority of the company to finish the beginning inventory. While for weighted average, there was no partial work done last month. So we assume that all the work done is this month. So even if we say that for last month, there was 20% work done in the direct materials, for this month, we assume that there was no work done. So the work done this month is going to be 100%. 
Also, it is going to be finished at the same time with the unit started this month. Okay. So now let's talk about the physical units. Okay. So there are three stages of inventory. We have here the beginning inventory and we have here the units started this month. Okay. So for the units started this month, this could either be completed or not completed. So for the units started this month, it could either be started and completed or it could be started and not completed or more commonly known as the work in process ending inventory. Now, if we add the beginning inventory that's going to be finished this month because this is the priority and if we add it to the unit started and completed this month, then we have here the units transferred out because since these are the inventory that is already finished and done, we're going to transfer them out either to finished goods or the next department if they need more processing. These are the items that are usually given in accounting problems. So as you can see here, 5,000 for the beginning, 12,000 for the unit started this month, and 2,000 for the work in process ending inventory. Now, since we already know that the ending inventory, we can work back the units started and completed. If 12,000 was started this month and 2,000 units were not completed, then we can say that 10,000 of the units have been completed. Now, since we know the units started and completed this month, if we add it to the beginning inventory that's going to be assumed to be finished this month as a priority, then we get the units transferred out. Take note of these numbers. Okay. Now let's talk about the equivalent units of production or EUP. When we say equivalent units of production, it is basically the work done on units this month. Take note, this month. So we're talking about work done this month. We don't care about the work done last month. We, were, we care about the work done this month. So when we say work done, it could either be the materials added with respect to direct materials or it could be Conver the conversion of the products with respect to conversion costs. For this lecture, uh, we're going to use conversion costs because conversion costs is just the combination of direct labor and overhead. And since overhead costs is usually based on direct labor, then we can combine them for simplicity for now. Okay, so for this example, Let's say that the, for the work in process beginning inventory, 80% has been done and 70% has been done. Take note, we're talking about beginning inventory. So, beginning inventory has already been started last month and there has been partial work done last month. But when we're solving for the EUP, we only consider the work done this month. So, for the beginning inventory, for the direct materials, 20% is work done this month. While for conversion cost, 70% done last month, then 30% is the work done this month. While for work in process ending inventory, this comes from the unit started this month. Remember, unit started this month is composed of the unit started and completed this month and the work in process ending inventory. So since this comes from the unit started this month in August, then the direct materials that's completed 90% is the EUP also, which is 90%. And for the conversion cost of 60%, it is also the EUP since this is the work done this month. Remember, work in process, ending inventory comes from the units started this month. Therefore, the work done for work in process ending inventory talks about August. So 90% and 60% talks about August. While well, for the work in process beginning inventory, 80% and 70% comes from July. And we want to know the work done this month. And this month is August. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now, let's talk about how we're going to account for these items. Okay, let's solve for the EUP. Okay, so as you can see here, the work in process beginning inventory, 5,000 and 12,000, if we add these two, this results to the total units to account for. So we need to account for these 17,000 units. Now we can break this down into three. Beginning inventory, started and completed, and the ending inventory. Now remember uh, that for the beginning inventory, 80%
has been done for direct materials and 70% has been done for conversion costs. So, we have to compute for the EUP this month. So, 5,000 multiplied by 20% since 20% will be done in August because 80% has already been done in July. That's 1,000. For conversion costs, 30% is going to be done in August because 70% has already been done last month. For your unit started and completed, we just say thank you because of course, this has been started this month and it was also completed this month. Then that basically means 100% of the work done is this month. So we just copy them here. For the work in process ending inventory, this comes from the unit started this month. So 90% and 60%, we just multiply it to the physical units. Now that we know the EUP of beginning, started, and completed, and inventory, we can compute for the total EUP, which is 12,800 units and 12,700 units for conversion cost. So these are the units that we're going to divide with the current period cost. So current period cost divided by this EUP. Now you may be wondering, and you might have this question in mind, can we just get the total peso cost? and divide this by the physical units of 17,000? Isn't that easier? Getting the total cost, divide this by 17,000. 5 plus 10 plus 2, 17,000. Isn't that easier? And can we do that? The answer is no. We cannot do that. Why? Because remember, these units are not yet completed. So to address this issue, we solve for the equivalent units of production so we can get the cost per unit despite not having completed physical units. Remember that that's the concept of EUP. How many quasi units do we have based on the work done this month? Hope that's clear. So let's solve for the cost per EUP. So we have here the prior period cost for direct material and, and conversion cost, 30,000. We have here the current period cost. So since EUP is this month, then current period cost is what we're going to use to solve the cost per EUP. Take note of the total cost here. So these are the total costs, both prior period and current period. So since we have already solved for the EUP for direct materials and conversion costs, we just divide them. So here are the costs per EUP using FIFO, 5 and 4. So let's solve for the cost of ending inventory. Remember that we have already solved for the EUP of ending inventory with regards to DM and CC. Now just need to multiply 1,800 by 5 and 1,200 by 4. If we sum them up, we get the total ending inventory cost of 13,800. Now remember that we have the total cost here of 144,800. If we deduct 138, then we get 131,000. So this residual value is the total cost transferred out. This could either be going to finished goods or it could go to the second department if it needs more processing. So that's basically it. That's process costing. Now let's go to the slide or the lesson that you have been waiting for. The T account method. Now to begin the t-account method, we first need to understand na itong t-account method, ibang mundo na to. So let's not use the way we solved earlier. Pero we're going to use the numbers kanina. Okay? Clear. So if you can remember, beginning inventory 5 started this month 12,000, ending inventory 2,000. Uh, so let's look for the EUP for direct materials, ah. Okay, so direct materials, 80% done, ending, 90% done. Okay, remember, wala na tayong pakialam sa this month, this month, this month na kaninang way natin ng pag-solve. Kasi this time, T-account na tayo. Yan, ang favorite natin since basic accounting, the T-account method, walang palya. Okay, what's the beginning inventory? Remember na ang pinapag-usapan na natin is T-account o ano na talaga ang nangyari? Ano na talaga ang nangyari? Eh, di ba 80% done nangyari na yan? Hindi ba yan yung beginning inventory? Therefore, 5,000 times 80% is 4,000, which is the beginning inventory. Ngayon nagtataka ka, bakit hindi 20%? Eh, kasi nga yun, 20% is this month, this month, this month. Eh, ang pakialam natin is ano ang beginning inventory? Ano ba talaga yung inventory natin last month? Eh, 
Nalagyan na natin ng 80% yung direct materials, di ba? So, yun yung begin inventory. 5,000 times 80%. How about for ending inventory? 2,000, eh, nalagyan na natin yan ng 90%. So, 2,000 times 90%, 1,800. Okay. So, alam mo na yung beginning, alam mo yung ending. Ngayon, alam din natin kung ilan ang na-transfer out. Ilan ba ang materials na transfer out? Remember na, yung beginning inventory natin, minatapos na tayong 4,000 last month. Pero this month, minatapos din tayong 1,000. Therefore, yung 5,000 na yan, tapos na yan. So, transfer out na natin yan. Pero don't forget that we have started and completed, which is 10,000. Natapos na rin naman na, na kailangan natin transfer out for a total of 15,000. Since alam mo na yan, we can now find for the missing item here, which is the EUP of 12,800. So, i-work back mo na lang. 4,000 minus 1,8 minus 15,000 equals 12,800. Na pag nakita mo kanina, is parehas din sa nasolve natin using the traditional method of solving for the EUP. So, that's the T. So, that's the T in process costing systems. I hope you enjoyed this video and peace out.